think we're on. No. Nope. Let me turn down the volume here. I can still hear myself. <laughs> there we go. Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew Friday edition. I'm going to point the there we go. The microphone a little bit more oh, yeah. in our direction. Ah, close enough. <laughs> um, so I'm James and this is Chris. He's Ooh. joined me uh, for the first time sitting in on mm -hmm. the program. We're going to play uh, three games today, of course, of Tari 2600 Homebrews. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is one that was just released recently. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Refraction. Actually, that's not the screen we want to show. So there's a little preview of it. Oh. <laughs> Let's go to the big screen. There we are. Ah. Um, first one we're going to play is Refraction, and it is a brand new game. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just posted in the Atari Age forums. Let's see the date. It was not, well, March 30th. Um, that was the date on it. Oh, okay. um, that's the date that I have on it, but he posted not too long ago. And mm -hmm. it looked, it, it's a simple game, mm -hmm. but it looked interesting enough to mm -hmm. showcase it on the show, and it looked mm -hmm. complete enough. Right. So yeah. this is a work in progress. Okay, okay. It's not a completed game. It's not on cartridge. So it's just on a ROM. Well, it's it's there and it's usable right now. It doesn't like crash as soon as you turn yes. it on. So that's that's always a plus. <laughs> yeah. So when I when I do want to do a work in progress game on the show, mm -hmm. I want it fairly feature complete or right. like fairly close that you can evaluate how it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And this seems complete. Like um, everything's there unless he's going to add some bonus stuff. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you don't get a pl to play a lot of two-player games. There's a lot of one-player. Mm -hmm. So I like to throw those in right. once in a while. Second game we're going to play is uh, DK Arcade 2600. Ooh. And this is not Donkey Kong. It's DK. <laughs> right. Um, very, Nintendo. very, very close, but not quite. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the big N is very protective of its IP. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be very careful when you may want to make homages to games or put them or make better versions right. than ones that were ever put out mm -hmm. or make ones that were never put out on that platform. Right, because there's the example of the Pokemon that the person took years on, and as oh. soon as he released it, they got slapped down 24 hours less. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, and, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of them are, you know, works of passion. They're not mm -hmm. getting any money, and if right. they ever tried to make money, they'd be in court. Like, it'd mm -hmm. be more than a cease and desist. Yeah, they'd be yeah, going to sure. court because they made money off it, and they want that money that they made. Mm -hmm. But it's also, at the same time, a little disappointing that this game gets taken away from the public and mm -hmm. that company also will never make that game. Right. So it's like, well, everybody loses? <laughs> really? Maybe they should just... Usually what the public want is like, hire that guy, mm -hmm. put them on the team, pay him, and put out the game. Well, that's that's what some companies do. I mean, Valve... Rarely, rarely. It used to be a better trend back in the yes. day. Like, Valve used to love doing that where they... Yeah. Hey, that guy's doing good things with this mod, so let's let's make it a real thing. Yeah, and <laughs> that's like a win-win for everyone. Mm -hmm. And you know, if it's if it's a good enough game that it gets attention of the of you know people downloading it and the attention of the game company, then there's something to it. Right. If it's terrible enough, it gets <laughs> it'll just get ignored. Yeah. Right? So the third game we're gonna play is actually a released game. Ooh. Um, Star with Castle a oh. with a box, <laughs> and this is a port of an arcade game. Um, so we're gonna play that third, and I'll try and pronounce the guy's name correctly who programmed <laughs> it. Um, he makes a lot of really good games, but he sent me the pronunciation of his name so I don't screw it up again. <laughs> Ooh, again, so again, well, constantly. First? Is, is this the second try or third try or oh i tries? don't know one the last time i didn't even try and pronounce his name so he's like no i'm gonna give you the correct way to say the name mm -hmm. this is not gonna happen anymore and even then i'm like eh. it's got six consonants in a row 
Okay, I'm not even <laughs> going to attempt to do that. <laughs> yes, it's it's challenging for mm -hmm. an English speaker. Um, so let's get to the first one, mm -hmm. which is the two-player game Refraction. So on this show, what we'd like to do is not read instructions. <laughs> of course. <laughs> At least at first. I mean, who really read instructions the first time around anyways? Nobody. You pop no. in the game, you play it immediately. Mm -hmm. Of course, new games have like tutorials yeah, yeah. built yeah, in. Yeah, new games will beat you with a hammer until you understand. It's and like, then they'll beat I you with a hammer it? again. Yeah. Can I please skip it? Mm -hmm. Or even ones that when you start the game over from scratch, like a second or third time, mm -hmm. there's like built in tutorials that you yeah, cannot yeah. skip. It's part of yeah, the yeah. game. Or it just constantly is reminding you, hey, if you jump, you can jump again. <laughs> it's like uh, pause and yeah. Mm -hmm. Then there's the one that do really well where they really mesh it with the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, where you don't know that you're playing a tutorial, you're just playing the game and you're yeah. learning as you go. Those are the best. And, mm -hmm. and games are getting, I think, better at that. Um, so I'm going to restart it. I just wanted to make sure which mm -hmm. one's first player. Right. Okay, let's reset this. Okay, so Refraction by mm -hmm. Mass Work 2018. That's brand new. Okay. Um, nice title screen there. Yeah, it's got yeah. a little reflection of the ball bouncing as it gets close, like mm -hmm. it's a watery. Yeah, yeah. Lining and reflection. as it comes down, it's actually it's actually changing from just a solid pixel to uh, to wind. Yeah, and yeah, it's very very nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay, I'm so on the left. I'm on the right here, and I are have bouncing <laughs> lots across the screen. I have barely played this. Okay. So okay. I know the kind of basics. Right, so it's up and down. There's no left and right. Oh, we can shoot as well. And there's a shot. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. You got a point. Okay. So don't get shot. That's always a plus. And I did shoot the the purple oh. block, and it kind of okay. got absorbed. And the bullets bounce around once it goes into your zone as well. Yes. So. Okay. And I think they st stayed... Oh, it does disappear after a while, so it only yeah. goes for a little bit. And the purple block absorbs it, and I can recall my shot if I if you're out of the way. Oh. And the name of the game is... Ref was it Refraction? Refraction, yeah. So if you notice, as it goes, passes into yours, mm -hmm. it doesn't reflect, it refracts. Right. So a little bit of a curve... So, it kind of fools you where the direction the bullet is going to go. Oh, and you can't touch the block either. No, so that's like an added difficulty. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> you have to watch two things that are going on at once. Yeah. Oh, oh good. it's good you recalled that one. It was just about to hit me. <laughs> oh. And oh, you don't get much time to maneuver around the no. shot because it bounces so the quick. Oh, yeah. it went right through me. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. So it acts like, like when I, technically, when I shoot the bullet through mine, it mm -hmm. should refract yeah, and then... first and then refract again because mm -hmm. it's acting like the the middle part is a different mm -hmm. medium. Yeah. Is like it... say air and air and water. Hmm. Um, okay. Just wondering how long the bullet is bouncing. Is it bouncing on a fixed time or is it number of bounces? Oh, well, both are the same <laughs> <laughs> because there's no difference. Yeah. Um, so, oh, oh, like when it stops, it could be absorbed by the wall. I don't know. Let me let it go. That went right through you. Oh, it stops in the middle. So it's not mm. necessarily bounces. Yeah. It's more like time. It's probably a time. So really when you want to get, it's 
weird. Does it is it always bounce the same or is it bounce towards you? Let's see. So it went down there. I think it does. It went down there. No. And it went up there. So it always like this way. Well, I think it's based on the the actual the actual refraction of it, because it's. I mean, it's it's just kind of strobing, but is it strobing like up or down, depending? That went through you again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's definitely a hit detection mm -hmm. bug, um, because I've seen the bullets go right through us, mm. unless it was just glancing. That was a direct hit. Ah. Oh. <laughs> So I'm getting more used to where to aim to get close to you. Yeah. So it's always refracting towards the center okay. of your screen, of the opposite guy's screen. Hmm. So technically, as you're shooting, if I stay there, you can't hit me on the first bounce. Hmm. Like, if you stay right there, go right to the bottom. Yeah. And if I aim for you, I'll never be able to hit you on the first shot. Yeah, no, you wouldn't. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Actually, if you stay right there, I may <laughs> never be able to hit you. Well, the, the block there's... just got me right... Yeah, the block yeah. will get you. So you so, do have to still watch out for that. Yeah, so you still can't just hug a corner and just call it a day. You can hug it at first, but then you have to watch out for the... I wonder, can you hit me? Try and... Yeah, like a oh. direct? No, that'll Oof. never hit me. It has to be a bounce. Yeah. But you have to time it. It has to make its way all the way back to me. Mm -hmm. so. But at the right exact... <laughs> but at the right exact yeah. angle. Well, there oh, we go. Okay. So there is no safe place. I was That's what I was thinking. It's like, mm. is there a safe place where there's an angle that you can never get me? But no, I think it's... So there's enough granularity in the up-down movement that mm -hmm. it would cover every single spot. Yeah, depending on how you're lining up the bounces there. Yeah. yeah. What? That went right through you. <laughs> yeah, he, I think the hit box needs to be a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> what does this go to? Infinite? <laughs> I guess until somebody gives up. <laughs> Give up! Oh. Do you concede oh. yet? <laughs> Never. <laughs> I thought the purple things at the top of the screen at the left and right had mm -hmm. something to do with lives or yeah. rounds or but they haven't moved and they yeah, haven't changed. No, they haven't. And we've surpassed the twenty one mark. Mm -hmm. Which is usually a yeah, no. normally you'd be like best out of five or something like yeah, that. Yeah, five, fifteen, mm -hmm. twenty-one. I've heard a lot of twenty-one. But so far, maybe it's twenty-five? Mm -hmm. We'll find out shortly. Maybe it's infinite. Maybe it's tempting us to go to ninety-nine and see if <laughs> it rolls over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to crash the game for it. <laughs> or if it's, is it 256 we have to get to? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> Really how, depends on how much uh, memory they have floating around for the game. That's true. Did it use 8 bits of memory or did it use a 16 bit uh, score? Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, it's not 25. <laughs> no. Then there's games where you have to beat the person by mm. X number over right. a certain number. Yeah, like the tennis, exactly. Like there's only a four point mm. difference right now. And also, does the purple block get refracted? I don't think it does. It no, just it's a just kind of moving on its own. It's, it's more so, Pong-like. Yes, so the rules of this game are fast and loose. <laughs> <laughs> With the refraction. Because <laughs> going, it should when you're going through two walls, do um, double refraction. Like, the, the whole refraction bit I get. And then yeah, the, the and that's great. Bit. But combining them both at the same time, uh, <laughs> you could just use the bullets and kind of just shoot at each other. Um, I don't think there's enough... 
there's enough there with mm. just the bullets. Because there's like one of the first yeah. games released on the console, which which is combat, mm -hmm. which is kind of the same. It's two mm -hmm. things shooting right. at opposite sides. Um, but they had different mazes, and right. you could be in a plane or something. But yeah. it was just and, and with with the uh, the floating cube around as well. It's an extra thing to to keep track of. Yeah. So. And, and it is definitely. Like it's not gonna be a zero zero score. Mm -hmm. Like it's it is definitely difficult to keep avoiding things. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna play to fifty. <laughs> <laughs> and then we will stop. <laughs> and I don't think there's any options mm. on the title screen. Okay. So we'll, after this, we'll go back to the title screen and see if there are any options but this is a like a first release first mm -hmm. public release yeah so what's going to show up later on is probably going to be a bit more than yeah there might be speed of bullets mm -hmm. or different yeah. angles of refraction um, definitely he'll have to fix the score issue <laughs> 38 is way too high way way too high Maybe he has some sort of, like, epic backstory in mind as well. <laughs> Could be. You always have to come up with something. Some yeah. planet fighting with some other planet over resources or, you know. Even the games back in the day, they, they always had some sort of idea of, like, yeah. Missile Command, the, the three cities for the three cities on yeah. the coast where he grew up and all that. Oh, wow. Because all you were looking at were very mm -hmm. crude drawings, so mm -hmm. sometimes the the box art had to speak for it. Yeah. Or the sometimes they included comics which mm -hmm. told the backstory, mm -hmm. or just the in, in the instruction manual. Right. Just, yeah, the manual could be less how to do this and more why to do this. Yes. <laughs> why you're shooting a block with another block, <laughs> <laughs> and you're a block. So I'm assuming you were not around for any of the 2600 era. Uh, no. So when did, when, what was your first console? My first console was Nintendo. Nintendo, yeah. NES, the yeah. first yeah. NES. Yeah, yeah, okay. um, And which, which were the big, obviously probably the Mario games, Zelda? Mm, yeah, Zelda. Yeah. Yeah, Mario Excite Bike was Excite another bike. big one. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Make your own tracks. That was always good. Mm -hmm. um, and did you ever play any of the first, like, second gen consoles, uh, Atari 2600, Coleco, mm -hmm. and television? Yeah, I, I've played them. I just never owned any of them. Right. So, like, we found, like, me and a friend of mine, we found an Atari in his basement one day, and we were playing some of those games. <laughs> yeah, dusted it but, off. <laughs> but this was years afterwards, when Nintendo was already on its yeah its later run of games, so in comparison, they weren't, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, in comparison, it's a totally different world. The step up from second mm -hmm. gen to third gen of NES mm -hmm. is, is huge. The, even just like the early Nintendo games versus the mid range to like the later ones oh, before. Oh my god! Yes. Yeah. Huge, huge difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we made it to fifty. <laughs> I don't think it's stopping. Yeah. Maybe there's a ninety-nine. Maybe. Do you remember if it was zero one, zero two, or if it was just one? I honestly do not remember. It is zero zero. So it might have wow. gone to ninety-nine and then either mm -hmm. rolled over or stuck at ninety-nine. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the title screen. Okay. And actually, let me log into the chat again. Mm -hmm. Make sure we're not missing anything. <laughs> Twitch chat is terrible. <laughs> because it doesn't go back in time. Oh, so see, if I don't right have now. it loaded... Right. Yeah. So all the time that people have been saying that we're just horrible at this. <laughs> yes. We have never seen it and it will never show up again. Yeah, sorry my tablet went to sleep. Um, so I don't think there's any options. No, that just starts it. Mm -hmm. That does nothing. Uh, I don't think the difficulties do anything. Um, so let me read the write-up of what I have for it. Okay. Um, so this was made by uh, N. Landsteiner, who is uh, no land on the Atari Age forums. Mm -hmm. uh, the instructions. Refraction is a simple two-player game with a twist. 
<laughs> move the joystick up and down to move the ship. We got that. Button mm -hmm. to fire. Right. A missile's trajectory will be refracted when passing through the barrier of the opposite side. Right. Missiles will bounce inside the opponent's field until they expire after a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. Time, we got that. Mm -hmm. Push joystick sideways. Oh, we missed something. <laughs> we did miss something. Oh. Push the joystick sideways mm -hmm. toward the opponent while a missile is passing the barrier to increase the refraction angle. Oh, okay. So Pull it in order to invert the fraction angle and play it a la bande. I don't know what that is. Avoid the floating bouncer. Uh, developers note the, joy the game is intended to be played with joysticks, not D-pads. Oh, sorry. It well, seems to work just fine with D-pads. Yeah, it was. I mean, yeah. we didn't try any of these fancy angle tricks. So. Which, yeah, because I have noticed in some games, mm -hmm. those accidentally get pressed a lot. Right. Because this is more made for a free yeah, movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not really designed to be, you know, one direction only. You're, yeah, it's an mm -hmm. eight-way eight almost. Right. Yeah. Uh, developers note, this game is intended to be... Oh, sorry. Press select or any controller button to start the game. Mm -hmm. Press reset to return the title screen, right? Mm -hmm. um, the color black and white switch selects the shape of the player sprites. Okay. Oh. So let's switch that over. Okay. Oops. To black and white. Mm -hmm. And we'll see what they look like. And we're going to try the... Uh, yeah, the, the different the, angles. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, different A little bit shapes. different looking. I didn't. Oh, <laughs> dying. Oh, yeah, that was a bit more of an angle. Uh, let's press back. That was less of an angle. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hmm. It doesn't change the behavior too much when you're at the corners it oh. makes like it makes it sharper mm -hmm. if you're at the corner oh, it doesn't seem to... does it yeah it's it's about twice as sharp or is it faster it seems faster yeah not sharper let me try it the other way or do you have to time it up Let's... no of course you just have to hold it that went right through you. <laughs> watch, watch this. Don't move. All right. That yeah. went right through you. Okay, okay. so developer. <laughs> there's a very easy test. One guy at the bottom, one guy at the top, and pressing it. <gasps> Unfair. Unfair. So is that like you're totally bulletproof there? No, no. no the it gets first... it the second time. Right. Okay, so let's, let's try this the other way. Okay, you do it that way. No, it's just unfair. <laughs> so it is literally <laughs> this spot only. <laughs> On the right-hand side player, yeah. Broken game. So, so that's that's interesting. The little... You get to change the angle a little bit. And the ships. Oh, so I can... When I'm directly in the middle, I can... Or does it... Was it random? So that's up. 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 Now I can make it go down by pressing to the left. Yeah, okay. Okay. But I can't seem to change the direction when I'm not in the center. Oh, I... Stop it. Oh, you can. Okay. All right, all right. It's just when you're at the very edge, you can't make it go down. Yeah, because I guess it's already bounced once. Ah, you know what it does? Yeah. I think it hits immediately right. to the bottom and bounces yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. So if I'm a little bit off of it, oh my God, that purple thing. A little bit off of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's what it was doing. I was like, why isn't it going the other way? Because there is no other way. <laughs> There's no room. Okay. Good. Good. So that's that adds a bit to it. Mm -hmm. um, about the game. The game has been written in 6502 assembler code. Mm -hmm. um, and it was developed in the course of April 2018 as part of Retro Challenge 2018. Okay. And he's got a blog with all the details, like a very mm -hmm. detailed blog of how he made this game. So that would be very good uh, for programmers to... Right. Like, begin and this was all in one big, basically long coding binge. Yes. Yeah. So it was okay. like a, 
um, a challenge to make a game in a month or a week. I didn't read in depth how long the retro challenge is. Because mm-hmm. um, there's there's gaming challenges where you're supposed to do it in like a 48 hour window. Yeah, yeah. And usually mm-hmm. have like a team of people. A team or, or a very one. limited game with one person. Yes, a <laughs> very simple <laughs> game. Mm-hmm. And there's um, pretty much two ways to make an Atari 2600 game. Um, two popular ways. One is assembler, mm-hmm. like he made it from scratch, typing in every single command, mm-hmm. jump, and you know, put that memory location there, load that mom- memory location. Mm-hmm. And then there's um, Batari Basic, <laughs> <laughs> or Batari, yeah, mm-hmm. and it's and it's a little bit higher level language, right? Where you know, there's for loops and and things where you don't have to do all the basics, right? Yeah, so that makes it a little bit easier, and you can. Mm-hmm pretty much draw out your graphics and so you don't have to do the of course if they're do, zeros, still doing so. it from assembly language they're not reinventing the wheel every time they yeah. they have some idea of what they're doing ahead of time yeah and there's lots of resources mm-hmm. online yeah. people who have done perfect you know how to divide by seven like mm-hmm. that is done they found the perfect way right most for most applications um not saying you don't have to use the other ways but yeah if you like paying go for it yeah, if you want to, you know, discover it yourself. Uh, and also, there's a tiny test application he wrote to explore the sound mm-hmm. of the Atari VCS Atari 2600. So I'm going to load that up, okay. and it's kind of interesting. And I think he... Um, which one is that? Okay. Mm-hmm. And he did this maybe to find what sounds were good for his right. game. Right, okay. And uh, yeah, I guess it was part of a challenge. He had to figure out the sounds. Yeah. While he was making the game, he couldn't. Yeah, and rather than um, change it by hand, mm-hmm. he made it's called Studio Twenty Six Hundred, oh, okay. and it actually looks pretty nice for mm-hmm. uh, just a thing to make sound. Mm-hmm. Um, so rather change by hand and then hear the sound, go back, mm-hmm. change it, hear the sound. Mm -hmm. Um, He made this chart of all the different types of sounds, which are on the left, 0 through F, and then the frequencies of that type of sound. Okay. So this is like what Atari 2600 games originally sounded like Mm -hmm. until pretty much Pitfall 2. (laughs) (laughs) These are the basic, basic sounds. Mm -hmm. So let's get them going here. be too quiet let me just turn it up a little bit mm-hmm. so this is sound one mm-hmm. going through it from lowest to highest mm-hmm. and then and then it's also two. displaying some stuff at the bottom there as well yeah a fake volume because <laughs> <laughs> there is no volume mm-hmm. control in this program anyway mm-hmm. So just cycling through them. Okay. It's a bunch of basic sounds. Yeah, so he's, he's got a grid that you can basically pick out his, his sounds from. Yeah, makes it easier, right? Mm-hmm. And, and probably if you're really familiar with Atari 2600 games, um, these are very familiar sounds <laughs> that, you know, every game used. Mm-hmm. Like just, a lot of them just went... Yeah. Just... <laughs> And the bad, the bad thing, like this was an afterthought mm-hmm. when they made sound for the 2600. Right. Because these aren't notes. <laughs> They're not even close to notes. Why they, would you need notes? Yeah. Well, notes sound like music and music sounds like, you know, oh, every no. tower. I know. That's, that's crazy <laughs> think. What they did is took a high frequency, arbitrary high frequency, mm-hmm. arbitrary low frequency, mm-hmm. and then just divided it up. Of course. Evenly by frequency, <laughs> so none of almost none of them land on a perfect note. Mm. So if you listen to old a uh, twenty six hundred game music, it's mm. like dee, doo, dee, dee. it's terrible. Oh, and there's all sorts of people that just love that sound. <laughs> yes. So they did their best. You know, they try and mm-hmm. put it in. Four and C are pure tones. Mm. Okay. Like this or four and but, C four like I don't know where that is but 
Well, it's a it's a hex for it across the board, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So it'd be, I think he's meaning this four mm -hmm. or this C. C, zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's a pure tone. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it means this one. Right. One. Oh, so C, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oops. 10. No, A. 9, <laughs> A. B, C. Mm -hmm. This one? Maybe. Depends which one you mean. Yeah. But programmers today have figured out how to do like mm -hmm. multiple notes, like three notes at the same time, right. using the coprocessors built into this cartridge and newer cartridges as well. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a, just a fun thing. A lot of them are used for sound effects, like right. a car. Mm -hmm. Like that one's kind of yeah. sound like a car motor. Yeah, I mean, as far as Atari is concerned, that's pretty close. So. Yep. And you can rev it up mm -hmm. or go lower. There's actually higher pitched ones. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty good for 1977 car sounds. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, select and reset our volume controls. Oh, there oh, you go. Oh, thank you. I, the programmer is in here, is in the chat. PDP1 <laughs> Gamer, or the person knows. Uh, oh, nope. there we and go. And it is even showing. Yay. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, so it, it was just at the middle. Hmm. Okay, so there is a volume. Very nice. Very, very nice. Thank you, <laughs> PDP1 Gamer. You can let me know in the chat if you are uh, the programmer of this game, whose name I've forgotten immediately. <laughs> it is... Um, no Land or N Land Steiner, mm. but you probably would have put No Land, but maybe not. People use different names depending on if it's taken or not. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so yeah, this is really kind of a neat little thing to just hear the sounds of the Atari, or if, or if you're programming mm -hmm. by by hand in assembler and don't want to use any of the mm -hmm. um, advanced processing power of today's <laughs> homebrew. <laughs> mm -hmm. And some people do that. They challenge themselves yeah. to work with the tools. Yeah, with the original, what would be available at the time. Yeah, like within the 4K limit of what's on the cartridge, which mm -hmm. like, you know, Pac-Man was limited to that. It's like, make a Pac-Man game in, in yeah. 4K. And you're like, um, okay, <laughs> you got it. Yeah. <laughs> you just wait till you see it. <laughs> yep, Norbert here. Okay, excellent, yeah. welcome. Okay, so we're going to move on to the second game, mm -hmm. which is DK Arcade 2600, which has no relation to any other game mm -hmm. that you've ever seen or heard of. Yeah, Actually, I, don't, I'm gonna... I don't know what you're talking about. It, it is a brand <laughs> new game, brand yes. new concept. Yeah. So I'm going to put it in the Atari box. I don't think it supports it, but the next game does, so I might as well put it in. <laughs> The Atari box is for high scores. Oh, okay. Um, and remembers high scores and also where you were in the game. So save games as well. Because mm -hmm. um, thankfully they thought to be able to write to the joystick port and send signals out, which you wouldn't think they would. Yeah, why would, why, that is a weird thing that they were doing. Um, I th because there are some add-ons to the 2600, the, oh, yeah. I think they wanted a little bit of feedback, like the, mm -hmm. even the simplest kind of feedback. Mm -hmm. um, so this um, version of DK Arcade 2600 was sent to me by the programmer oh, okay. uh, a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, that might be a bit loud. Yeah, it does flash out mm -hmm. the first time you plug in the, <laughs> the game, unfortunately. So mm -hmm. he, he, he may have to look at that. Mm -hmm. This was made by I.E.S. Posta, um, who is uh, Michael Haas. Mm -hmm. And he did the music for Mappy mm -hmm. um, that we looked at uh, a couple days ago. Okay. Uh, amazing, amazing game. He did all the, the graph, uh, not the graphics, but the sound and the music. Mm -hmm. um, really good stuff. And this is his officially second game that he made. Okay. Um, for 
uh, the Atari. Mm. So, uh, as is tradition, um, the guest <laughs> plays first. <laughs> okay. Now, you can select either the Japanese or mm -hmm. the American version. And you can select the plumber. Not the plumber. What's his... Let me just make sure I get it right. It's not the a plumber. plumber or... The carpenter or the lady. Oh. Yes, he's a carpenter. Because why would there be a plumber? That doesn't make it sense. It doesn't make any sense. Why would you ever have a plumber? That No. <laughs> I mean, the girders, the girders in the game, they're mm -hmm. not ready for plumbing. No, no. He, you that's know, way you're building it. That. Yeah, he's not there mm -hmm. yet. So he's, he's, he's there to do the carpentry. Okay, okay. So we've got the carpenter. <laughs> and let's do... And the lady. American. I, and the differences are they just... The, the screens are in different order. Oh, okay. Yeah. How high can you drive? 25 meters. Wow, this... I have never seen... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dangerous spot. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a difference in this where the jumping, I, you might have noticed it already. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much you've played of some other, other game. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. um, you can jump. Once you're in the air, you can move the carpenter. Oh, yeah. The jump is not fixed. Like yeah. in some other games. In, like in other games. Right. <laughs> uh, Irk the Jerk is in oh. the chat. Welcome. I'm going to read a bit about this while you play. Okay. So this was made by uh, I... Iceposta and Bite Knight. Um, and Michael Haas, who's Iceposta. Other games are Doctor Who Berserk. Uh, this game, DK Arcade 2600. Um, Flappy. And he did the music for Mappy. Oh. Um, and he says, This was my first game, and it was just a mock up. He did the graphics, layout, music, and sound effects. Uh, he had never done any game logic programming before. Um, Bite Knight did most of the game logic, along with Rev, Eng, and others. Um, hopefully, this will be sold in Atari Age, on their in their store. Mm -hmm. um, and Atari Age does want to sell it. Mm -hmm. It might be difficult. So. Yeah, for some reason I don't know yeah. why. <laughs> so they have to be very, very careful. Um, because there was a game put out. You can keep going. Mm -hmm. I have lots to read. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was a game put out a little while back called Princess Rescue. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, so it was in, in you know, difficult uh, mm -hmm. situation, and, and mm -hmm. it did have to disappear, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and you can guess what the what Princess Rescue was, possibly. So in the same you know vein mm -hmm. uh, as this kind of but in a, a different game um, it would be best to start the game and press down to select the Japanese version okay the Japanese order goes L1 slanted girders L2 cement factory L3 springs the jumping springs and L4 the blue rivets okay so it does all four in order and doesn't go back and forth so right. you get to experience all the levels in a row. Uh, uh, and when complete, the carpenter gets the lady repeat. It makes the most sense. The American <laughs> order is different, mm -hmm. not showing the cement factory till the seventh screen. So you have to wait a while to see all the screens. And you can also play as the lady and rescue the carpenter. Right, which is what I'm doing right now. Excellent. So... And what I noticed in this game is that it has all the all the girders properly mm -hmm. and on the screen, mm -hmm. um, because other adaptions have either scrolled the mm -hmm. screen, right? Because there's not a lot of room, because mm -hmm. arcade games were very mm -hmm. vertical, like the screens were um, vertical. Right. Yeah. Um, they aren't like televisions that are that are wider. Mm -hmm. So conversions to home. Mm -hmm ones were very difficult. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go for the Japanese. And this one is the fire barrel, mm -hmm. which is awesome. But it does, did, does fire come out of it? No. no. So that hasn't been no, done yet or isn't so going to be done. We don't know. Ugh. 
this definitely has a lot more barrels than other versions. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of barrels coming down. Um, one thing I did notice is you can't go up the half... Oh, my God. You can't go up the half ladders, mm -hmm. um, where in other games you mm -hmm. can. Like this, it doesn't let you. Right. Another difference is this, obviously. You can just jump around wherever you mm -hmm. want, which uh, a lot of games in the 80s were like that, where they mm -hmm. were fixed jumps. Right, because... Oh, my God. A variable jump is so much extra work for you to do when yeah. no one else was really expecting it, then why bother to... Yeah, it just wasn't something, mm. and real life doesn't work that way. Not <laughs> that video games are anything like real life, but mm. when you are making something that has never been made before, mm -hmm. you tend to stick to some, like somewhat realistic, I guess, things? <laughs> I don't know. But it, it would just make sense that once you jump, you can't change direction midair. And it's more of a video game thing. Like, oh my god, there's lots of barrels. Mm -hmm. Other versions do not have as many barrels. There you go. Your oh, it resets too. So you have to switch it back each time. Yeah. Alright. Oh, I Posta says the arcade cabinet says the carpenter and the lady. Mm -hmm. And the big N didn't even program it. Um, outsource the arcade programming. <laughs> so it was a, a third-party game, mm -hmm. uh, which they highly adopted. Right, because a lot of elements. The original game wasn't even. It was a ColecoVision game way back in the day. <gasps> yeah, they did the licensing. I think they got the license for the home ports. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a Coleco game on an Atari system, <laughs> and there's a big rumor, which has been dispelled very recently and has been before, I believe that Coleco did a bad job of mm -hmm. making the, the Atari port. Right. But the programmer dispelled that and said no. Mm -hmm. I, they did what they could at the time with the resources they had. No fire on level one. Out of sprites. Come on. <laughs> there's so many sprites. No, there's a lot of barrels. Yeah. Because yeah. if you think, look at the bottom level. Mm -hmm. You'll have the barrel. Mm -hmm. You have Mario. Yeah. And you have possibly three barrels at the same time. So that's one, oh. two, uh, three, four, five, if you're not counting um, multicolors, which I don't... No, there's just one color on each line. Mm -hmm. so five is a lot. You're getting a lot of flicker. Mm -hmm. um, does a barrel flicker when you're at the bottom? It must. No, it doesn't. Oh, my God. <laughs> I want a do-over. Wow. I'm going to do a do-over. <laughs> But it doesn't flicker. That's so it's using mm -hmm. the two. So that's why it's just single color each, because the right. Atari has two sprites to mm -hmm. work with. Right. Which um, is kind of crazy when you think about what they actually managed were able to do with that. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> very very clever. And uh, Ice Posta says it has cartoon physics, <laughs> <laughs> like when um, cartoon characters stand over, mm -hmm. walk over a ledge. And uh, oh, good! <laughs> and they they uh, hold there for a couple seconds, mm -hmm. and then get scared and fall down. <laughs> yes, because gravity only applies when you look at it. So. Very true. I mean, if you ignore it, you know, there's a lot of people in the world that mm -hmm. ignore a lot of physics. Yeah, yeah, for you sure. You know, like round earths, and you mm -hmm. know. Okay, so the pie factory, mm -hmm. which is actually is it pie? It's cement. I can't remember. I know. I know there's cement factory. Oh my god. Well, I might as well get it. I didn't mean to get the hammer, but I might as well <laughs> smash some, smash some pies. I think it is pies. Even though that doesn't make sense. Why are there pies and a girder? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm it, it pretty makes, sure it's like things of cement, but they it makes look like pies. Just as much sense as the giant <laughs> monkey. <laughs> yes, the giant whatever it is at the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, go, 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 go. Oh, I have to wait for the ladder. At least there's no fire guys coming. Come on, come on. Oh, missed it. Hurry, 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 hurry. And does it matter if the guy at the top, the guy at the top, <laughs> I don't know what we're supposed to call him. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter if he touches you or not. That's yeah, a good I, question. I was pretty sure it did matter, but I don't know. Maybe I wasn't close enough to him. 
fell too far. That's why they give you the umbrella on the other side. Yes. <laughs> uh, can you jump up and hit your head on a barrel? I don't know. I think I did on the first run. I would think you could. I did play this br very briefly on an emulator. Or was it on here? And I tried... To oh, that was a bad move. Get back. Oh! <laughs> and you can't... It looks like you can jump... Mm -hmm from one up to the next one mm. um, on the first level because mm -hmm. your feet are actually higher than it but mm -hmm. it's like no you have to climb it makes you climb I'll show you what I mean next time I get out of here <laughs> go down I'm down here it's no time there is time do you die when the time yeah you must die when the time's up or the, just your score will be saying you're zero slowly. Could be. This is too far. <laughs> I knew it's too far. I knew it. Should have jumped from the bottom. Okay. Yes, the barrels are on fire. You cannot touch the barrel. Um, the heat detection is at his belt, so his head can go into the barrels pretty far. Uh, okay. Okay. Ooh. The hit detection, not heat detection. <laughs> Even though it makes sense of heat, because there's yeah. fire in this. But not fires from the barrels. The barrels are not on fire. <laughs> but the hammer's hit detection can go up. Oh. You were trying to get away from that barrel. Yeah, that yeah, I jumped away from the one, the one <laughs> into the... <laughs> so there, there we go. I jumped into a barrel. Yeah. Very good graphics on the... Um, interstitial how high you can go mm -hmm. that's like super like pixel accurate pretty much from something mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't know what but it looks good it looks very mm -hmm. similar to something else you can jump off the lower platform when the top when the ele top elevator reaches the top you can jump off the lower platform when the top elevator oh, i don't know what that means Oh, did you start over? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Last life. Okay. Yeah. Um, but as, as I was saying before, this, the way it shows this on the screen is mm -hmm. like the levels mm -hmm. are probably the best representation of the game out of all of the ones that have been made. Yes. Of whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of all the other non-related games. <laughs> yes. And the, the fire barrel is mm -hmm. really, really good. Mm -hmm. That's a really good graphic there. And the, is it the girlfriend? What? The lady. Mm -hmm. That's good graphics too. Very colorful. Mm -hmm. And the carpenters. I'm going to go up here. I can't jump two in a row like that too easily. Barrels. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Like here. Oh, mm. I maybe mean, can't quite. Your foot's not. Mm. Your foot's not quite high enough mm. to make it realistic. Right. Actually, it's about the same height here. So I'm gonna check it again. No, it's like yeah. one pixel short. And while so. it's making the graphic noise, it doesn't actually keep score at all. So. The, like oh. It, oh, you mean jumping over bar barrels right, and stuff? Right. Right. Because in other. Other uh, games, not related to this one. <laughs> yeah, I keep score. Yeah, there would be a score for. You know, but there's also a and hammer. That's true. There's also a countdown too. Right. So it would need another vertical. I guess they. There's not to enough keep room. The countdown instead of score. Yeah, because I think he wanted to keep as much vertical. He added actually eight pixels more than normal to the vertical. Um, which can give give trouble, but it doesn't. Um, to give more room, so I can see why he wouldn't put the countdown and the score, because mm -hmm. there's not enough. Ooh, hit my head. There, finally, barrels are done. Okay, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice you can skip that. <laughs> And um, a very good flicker, flicker handling routine. Because um, mm -hmm. when there's more than one thing on a line, mm -hmm. 
it has to do something. It has to flicker one of the right. things. But when that third thing gets off, like we'll watch the barrel in the middle. It's not flickering, right? Mm -hmm. um, but once a fire guy gets there, it does mm -hmm. flicker. But when right. he goes away again, it stops flickering. So that's really good um, flicker handling mm -hmm. so that it's aware of how many how many items are on one line right. so that it reduces the flicker as much as possible. And that's always a good sign of somebody's paying attention. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's 8,000. 8, I don't know if it keeps track of inter scores like in between. Berg. Little guy, get out of here. I'm going to have to jump from the bottom and then go to the second platform. Oh, too early. I know you have to... Oh, the end. The high, How high is actually a title screen option? In basic? This is... Oh. Interesting. That's funny. Like this... Because on other games it looks exactly the same. So that that's funny. Probably as an example of, oh, substitute these graphics and you can make your own right. screen. And they make it easy in the basic. The score shows when you die or between levels. Uh, oh, okay, that okay. that's, makes sense. And a lot of Atari games do that because there's not enough room mm -hmm. to do it properly on screen. Right. The, it does use extra scan lines, PDP asks. The flicker on the stream is a lot worse than I thought it would be. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. my... Um, I'll, I'll let you know the name of the, the hardware encoder that I have. It is the Elgato HD60S. Um, it is not perfect, I'll let you know. It is pretty good. It is definitely made for modern games because when you're playing, like it, it's a 60 frame per second hardware encoder, but it's made for modern games. Like people aren't thinking, oh, I'm gonna do Atari 2600 games. <laughs> Where it, it employs like flicker that has to be exactly every 60th of a second. Right. And if you miss one frame, mm -hmm. then it, it looks weird. Right, because those frames are just missing on Atari versus yes. a modern game where it's just a maybe, const, it's a constant stream on a modern game. Yeah, you might have some like slight tearing, possibly. Yeah, tearing would be the only issue there. Mm -hmm. um, but on an Atari, it's it's essential. Like mm -hmm. you're drawing graphics, mm -hmm. like on this title screen. Like mm -hmm. we're looking at it on the television, and the television looks like almost mm -hmm. perfect. There's a mm -hmm. little bit of waver because it's going through. Um, you know, Frame Meister, and it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. There's a couple layers, um, but looking at it on the stream yeah, over you here, can see, it's a tiny bit worse. Yeah, you can see it's actually rendering the separate bits at the same separate times. Yeah, especially on the bottom brown guy mm -hmm. <laughs> character. <laughs> yeah, it's the other monkey. Yeah, it it yeah the monkey mm -hmm. at the bottom it it flickers a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, any lower than a 60 frames a second and a half of the flickering d doesn't show up. Yes, mm -hmm. it has to be 60 frames a second. And that's partly why I wanted to start this show. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of 2600 streams, and even Nintendo streams, mm -hmm. um, that employ the 60 frames a second um, to do their graphics, um, mm -hmm. use stream at 30 frames a second. Mm -hmm. So you'll see like bosses disappearing and right. like oh i knew that was gonna die <laughs> and like things just not on the screen because mm -hmm. they have to do the alternating thing mm -hmm. and i just got fed up with it i'm <laughs> like no somebody has to do it properly <laughs> um but i am still searching for the perfect mm -hmm. um 60 frames per second um hardware encoder um so if anybody out there knows one that's not like a thousand dollars because there are ones that are a thousand dollars that I know that'll probably do the job. <laughs> uh, oh, there's a buggy. Oh, Look at that. Yeah. Oh, can't. How, how did I do that? I don't know how I did that. You're clicking the ladder. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where I started. There we go. Mm -hmm. I think it was in mid jump. Like mm. I climbed right after a jump. Right. Because 
Well, maybe I'd have to look back on it. But that time I did climb immediately after a jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going back to the thousand dollar. I mean, for that you don't want to maybe you want a guaranteed. Mm. <laughs> yes, yeah, guarantee. I would want a money back guarantee that if it didn't work, I could send it back. Mm -hmm. um, after I don't doing a live stream about how much they suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's definitely not Twitch. Somebody. PDP One Gamer says it might be Twitch, but um, mm -hmm. no, it's not Twitch because on this side, uh, locally. Oh no, now there's a. Oh, mm -hmm. our guy's gone. He got stopped, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, on lo locally, it records it pretty much exactly how you see it out there. Um, I have tried to tweak the settings as much as possible, but. Um, oh. oh, damn it. What if I could do this? Yep, good. Um, to make it as seamless as possible for 60 frames per second, but it um, seems to be the best I can squeeze out of the Elgato HD60S. Um, if there's any more suggestions, no, there's nothing on the internet, okay? <laughs> Nobody has any suggestions on, you know, <laughs> recording 60 frames per second very well. Unless somebody can point me to that. The flickers at 58 frames a second. That's... Oh, I can't read that. <laughs> I'll read it after. That's the advantage of this. Of that uh, going back and go... <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes this level very easy. Yeah. Because you never have to land on the other side and then jump back. Mm -hmm. Too busy up there. Whoa, that guy sped down. <laughs> I think I'll stay on this side. Oh, what are you doing? Dude, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> I just have one monkey. more. Nope. All right. A little bit of a jump there. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> All four levels. And then it cycles, I think, mm -hmm. on the Japanese. Yeah. I wonder how it's harder. Are the barrels faster? Are there more barrels? Oh, that's a bad spot. <laughs> and the drawing of uh, the carpenter is really good mm -hmm. for the amount of height that you end up with. Mm -hmm. Having to squish. Ah, damn it, I was right over the ladder. Ah. Yeah, yeah I anywhere having... would recognize that carpenter anywhere. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. I mean, I would. <laughs> no, it's very good uh, rendering. A good use of negative space mm -hmm. for the mustache and the hair mm -hmm. going through onto the black, as you can see. Yeah, because it, it's see-through. Yes. That's a good way to get more than one color on a line, mm -hmm. especially when you want to draw it in black. Mm-hmm. down <laughs> oh, come on lots of points <laughs> that's a bonus mm -hmm. well, that was the problem of the random nature of this game in yes. other versions <laughs> oh it's tough Maybe you could play with the encoder settings if there are any. Uh, mm. There aren't really any encoder settings. There's not many encoder settings to play with. There is, um, there's like a bit rate. Mm -hmm. No, that's, no, that's in OBS, the bit rate. So that doesn't help. Oh, I didn't switch. Always do this. Somebody needs to remind me. There we go. Oh. Look. Rookie mistake. I know. It is a rookie mistake. <laughs> Maybe I'll get it after, you know, 30 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll give it another shot to play with the settings. Um, but I am get, I'm get. I think it is what you're saying, PDP1 Gamer, where it's an optimization, a, um, a drop of the frame, where it's mm. like, I don't have enough time 
mm -hmm. to encode this next frame, I'll just drop it instead of encoding it. Right. Um, which makes sense from a software slash hardware point of view, mm -hmm. because in most instances, like if you're recording mm -hmm. like a video of you know normal everyday life, you would not notice a uh, a dropped frame. Mm -hmm. Um, and on like a PS4 game, like a first person shooter, you would never notice one frame missing. No, you would. <laughs> it would just be nothing. Yeah. It would... It'd be hard pressed to find that frame. Mm -hmm. But in, um, in these, it's like super easy <laughs> to see them when there's, when there's flicker. In non-flicker games, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> what was that? Oh, you just skipped it. Oh, you're playing the American? Yes. Oh, okay, so it's on level four. Coming after. There you go. Oh, you're on the side of the ladder again. Oh, oh you fell off. <laughs> <laughs> the game flickers at 58 frames a second. That's why Elgato is all jumpy. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. I didn't understand before. So the game is programmed to flicker. Oh, at okay. 58 frames, so, so it's, it's always a little bit off, I guess. So it's not an even 60. That, that does make sense. It's not. I mean, it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I right. think I think we've exhausted this one. We got all the levels. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, it's a really good version of a game. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> good original game. They should yes. make more of these. Yeah, the graphics are great. Mm -hmm. um, the controls are really good. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the sound is right on. Like when you jump, the, mm -hmm. the sound makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it all falls in line with what you're expecting for this brand new original game. <laughs> <laughs> it's got all four levels, which the original mm -hmm. Atari um, port did not have. Oh, really? Um, yeah, different platforms different uh, like Coleco I think had all f at least three mm -hmm. but the Atari got ripped off mm -hmm. you just got two and that's why the rumors were abound it's oh. like oh, uh, we're gonna make it worse because Coleco wanted their version to be better well to be fair Coleco needed every edge they could so <laughs> yeah yeah um, and all the screens fit perfectly like everything is represented from mm -hmm. um, from the game um, so it's great, and the addition of playing the American and Japanese version right. is awesome, and, and being in, in and the gender swap as well. That's that's interesting. Yes, that's great because mm -hmm. I was showing Tanya the other day this game when I was um, making sure it was working. She mm -hmm. she liked the fact that you could play mm -hmm. as uh, the lady. Is that what it yes. is? Yeah, the lady. Yes, the lady. Yeah, so it's a great um, additional option for people who want to play as mm -hmm. either the carpenter or the lady. Right. So. Um, yeah, um, I would definitely um, buy this as well as like the definitive version of this game. Mm -hmm. um, and Eric the Jerk says he would buy it too. Um, great job passing four levels. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I'm just not very good actually. <laughs> but you, you I'm glad I did. Than me, so. Yeah, that means I can do all the levels at some capacity. Mm -hmm. So therefore I could possibly mm -hmm. do another round of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in general, Donkey Kong is a yes. DK is a hard game. <laughs> this game's a hard game. No, it's fine. <laughs> as long as I don't, you know, post tag, <laughs> you know, tag it because yeah. um, on like uh, YouTube or whatever, you don't mm -hmm. use the words mm -hmm. because there's like teams of lawyers typing right. in search words on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, what was I saying? Anyway, but, yeah, this is. Uh, Mm -hmm. This is a really good representation of it, and the mm -hmm. best the best one so far. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, hopefully they'll be able to um, uh, get this in the store one way or the other, at least for a month or so, <laughs> so everybody <laughs> has the opportunity to buy it. Well, uh, I mean, the big end. They <laughs> yes. got around the whole copyright issue with Universal. Oh, yeah, Because I Universal know. is arguing that their character... That it was based on was so generic yes. that there was no such need for a copyright on it. I know. Yeah, they stabbed themselves in the foot, shot themselves in the foot on yeah. that one. 
So the next one we're going to play is Star Castle. This one is a completed game that you can buy. Um, I have barely played it. I have never even seen this game in the arcade. I don't know how popular it was. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever heard of this game before? I have not. Um, yeah, Star Castle. Um, so there is... I'm going to read some stuff out after we get to it. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll go through the manual and everything and mm -hmm. see how well we can do but we're gonna play it without knowing what we're doing first because that's the fun of discovery mm -hmm. oh. missed the intro let's do that again and are you going to change the uh there we go atari age the cover there as well oh thank you <laughs> that's what i need the uh the co-host to remind me of no don't there we go it's not uh, dk even though it says it on there Okay. And you are first. I won't tell you anything. Push. Oh. Help you fire. Yeah, start. Oh, good music, too. Okay. Paused. Did you do that? No. Did I? Press the fire button? No? Weird. Okay. Weird. Okay, let's try it again. Get ready. Pause. Uh, <laughs> what? Is it not liking the second controller being plugged in? or? That's super weird. Okay, duh. let's see. What? Wow. What? <laughs> what is this? Oh! <laughs> okay, we figured it out. It's very strange. Um, but black and when you have it set to black and white, mm -hmm. that's the pause. Oh. But it was already set to black and white from the previous game. Oh. So as soon as it starts, it pauses. Okay, so there you go. We will restart the game. There you go. All right, all right. And that's what you get for not reading instructions. It's the fun of discovery. I know. So this is was originally a vector game in the arcade, oh. and and it did have the vector typography in the intro where it was kind of a little yeah. hard to read and it looked like it was drawn with lasers yes. a little bit. That's on purpose, which is um, actually pretty cool. So this game was uh, is a 32k ROM slash 26k ROM. Um, it's made by Thomas Yanks. Yanksh? Mm. Yanksh. Mm. I think that's how you say it. Okay. He typed it out Y. The pronunciation, he typed out Y-A-N-T-S-C-H. Mm. Yanksh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got it. So you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong still. <laughs> I think at this point, with enough failed attempts, he needs to record it and then send it in. There we go. <laughs> And then it will just be played, and then it will be right. <laughs> and if it's wrong at that point... Then I can play his recording yes. every time I want to say it, instead right. of me saying it. Exactly. If he says his own name wrong, well... <laughs> That's his own fault. <laughs> so Star Castle is a 1980 vector arcade game by Cinematronics. The game involves obliterating a series of defenses orbiting a stationary turret in the center of the screen. The game was designed by Tim Skelly and programmed by Scott Bowden. Skelly also created a number of cinematronic titles, including Starhawk, Armor Attack, and Ripoff. A part, a port of Star Castle for the Vectrex was released in 1983. Wow. And... I can get it before everything down. Oh. So there is the original game. There's the Vectrex port of Star Castle. So this did make it to the home console because Vectrex is a, um, maybe I okay, you want to see my face, <laughs> Vectrex is a vector based um, gaming system. Mm -hmm. So it was possible to more easily do this mm -hmm. because this is a very tricky game to, yeah, for, to draw. <laughs> for Atari, this is a very... Yeah. Atari programmer Howard Scott Warshaw 
investigated writing a clone for Star Castle for the 2600. He's like one of the, he made Yars Revenge and a, a bunch of other big name. He also mm -hmm. made E.T. Oh. <laughs> um, well, let's not hold that again. <laughs> yes. He made the worst game and the best game. <laughs> worst game. Um, but didn't see the game as a good match for the system technically. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, I'm like, how is this going to even be ma made? He reconfigured the concept into Yars Revenge, mm -hmm. which is his, the biggest, it says, became Atari's top selling original game for the 2600. <clears throat> A hobbyist written clone of Star Castle for Atari 2600 was eventually released in 2012, which is not this one actually. Oh. There's one made a couple years earlier. So let's get back to this. And I missed a bunch of chat, of course. Oh, there it is. Um, I, I supposed to said a post of mine in frustration that a home brewer made an 8k star castle and wasn't going to release it <laughs> i suggested we throw everything at it and made it 32k uh, cdw started it and had it working in like three weeks and then thomas yanksh <laughs> finished it over months and months vector arcade game yep and pdp1 uh gamer said love the vector style top topography <laughs> 20 times. Yeah? Have you defeated the guy yet? I have center? not. I just came to the conclusion you can actually shoot the projectiles oh. rather than just trying to avoid them. <laughs> does not work. <laughs> Avoiding doesn't work too well. Oh, you got one. Last ship. Yeah, I've seen that screen before. <laughs> now the number of animations in the player ship and the enemy ship is amazing mm -hmm. like how many degrees that yeah. they have like mm -hmm. it's not vector mm -hmm. so it needs to have a different you know drawing for each angle that it has mm -hmm. that's a lot of drawings and a lot of memory that's why this is a 32k mm -hmm. now, I played this very briefly and it's hard as hell <laughs> ah, whoa, did I you actually get it? I think you got oh, it. Last second? Oh my god. Ah! Okay. Ah, run, run! <laughs> They're too. I'm gonna play again. <laughs> Yeah, running really isn't too much of an option. Because you have to shoot, and then you have to turn. You have to get really close to it too. Mm -hmm. And yep. Ah, uh, because you have to face it to shoot. Right, you have to face it in the direction you're shooting. But then you have to also duck, run away, which requires you moving. <laughs> but you can't preserve momentum, so you could really like go right into it again. Well, I mean, if you just crank it across the screen for a while, get get going pretty fast then oh, you can start like doing some more like do training. like this and turn and shoot yeah oh, but then you slow down right and you so, die so <laughs> you're going to i guess you go at full speed yeah which you I get a couple of shots off and then you go at full speed again a different direction yeah mm, yeah i don't know about that it's a tactic it is a tactic <laughs> i mean if you're thinking like back in the day oh like oh my god like like Babylon 5, like the ship combat, they would show the ship flying, and they would turn and shoot. And oh. they'd be like, oh, well, look, they're using Newtonian physics. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like a three-second clip that they use over and over again. Because <laughs> they didn't want to re-render it. Right. Because they were using... Oh, we're on expert difficulty. Oh. Oh, are. that's why. Wow. Well... Let's restart this game. I knew it. I knew it because I saw, I was, while researching this, I saw some people play and they were bouncing off that shield. I'm like, yep. There we go. So well, this should be a little bit easier. And, and it was the arcade version and they were bouncing off the shield. I'm like, what? When we were playing this? Like, how come we're dying bouncing off the shield? Yeah, yeah. And it's only <laughs> shot off. Like it's only shot like two projectiles that whole time when okay. you were ducking around projectiles the whole time. Well, this will be a lot better. <laughs>
thinning. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tactic. <laughs> it is a tactic. <laughs> I don't know, oh. but a good tactic. Yes. Thank you, Ice Posta. That makes life a little bit easier. Now we can actually uh, maybe play it a little bit longer than yeah. two seconds. Yeah, perhaps we will even defeat the first castle. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I noticed he, when I was doing research, he rebuilds his castle up, so you have to, you can't just, yeah, and they're going a lot slower. Look at it. Yeah. It's like, and it barely even made it out and then disappeared. Whoa. Oh, geez. That is where he got the idea for Yard's Revenge. That's for sure. Actually, there's so much in here from Yard's Revenge. I don't know if you have played that one too much. But it's, it's pretty much this game, except except it's flat. Oh, the okay. shield is like uh, just a wall, mm -hmm. and the bad guy's on the other side of the wall. Actually, no, it's like a, a half circle. It's a half circle that doesn't rotate. Sometimes it does rotate. Actually, it's different. There's different uh, variants. But and um, whoa, that guy's mad. Yeah, he's pissed. <laughs> he's like, you're taking too long. Well, I, I, I almost had it down to the left. Oh, you're so close. Uh, oh. Okay, now I'm going to give it a good try. <laughs> oh, there you go. You get to put your name in. And it's real oh. because I've got the save key in. <laughs> your name will live forever on my system. <laughs> Until I erase no. it. What? Oh, I think you have to go left and right, and the button is yeah, finished. Yeah, so it's gay as opposed to gay, but eh, close You just enough. have to beat your own score. <laughs> Look, he rebuilt it. Oh my god. Uh, that was too So close. when the circle goes away, when you've gotten rid of the circle completely is when you rebuild the best. Oh, so maybe I shouldn't yeah. completely kill the outside? Oh my god. And once he's down to the last layer, he starts shooting off those large things. Oh, and you break through? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was true. Oh, oh he built it up in the meantime. He's getting mad. He changed... Ah, ah, he's trying <laughs> to turn around. Because he's orange. I think he changed his color, too. If you look, oh. ah, terrible at turning around. <laughs> I hope I didn't get a. Oh, I did. Oh. Uh, oh, okay, up and down. I have to press it. Yeah. Those are very small letters. <laughs> Is there upper and lower case or no? It's just mixed. No. Is that a Z? Y X Y. There we go. Zero page homebrew. <laughs> oh, I'm way down there. Oh, I'm last. <laughs> Ten. Oh, fi level fifteen. Wow. Oh my goodness. This this game has far more uh, more hope in us. Than I think. <laughs> yes. Um. PDP1 Gamer says this game actually inspires me to do a decent port of Space War, close to the 1962 PDP1 original. Yeah, I mean this. I mean you have to have, have gravity, um, but it shouldn't be. You know, it shouldn't. It's not too far. Like it, it would be simpler than this maybe. Um, yeah, if you substitute the center circles for like the planet with gravity and the enemy as the second player ship mm -hmm. and you as the normal ship it should be just the same this plays best with an asteroid button layout controller yes yeah, it's, Where it's left and right mm -hmm. thrust fire yeah or um or a two-way joystick at least might be yeah. better rather than an eight -way, an eight-way joystick <laughs> Oh, I should read more about this game. No. Uh, let's get to the instructions. Instruction manual. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, oh, yes. he did it! Got him. Yeah. 
Yes. Castle 2. Ships 3. Oh, and the first guy? Yep. You got him? Wow. Good job. Star Castle Arcade. Copyright 2014. Team Antonym. For centuries, the feudal Star Lords have controlled the galaxy from their impenetrable Star Castles. Once they were hailed as protectors of peace, now they serve only to plunder the galaxy of its energy and wealth. You have assembled a small fleet of ships to destroy the Star Castles and rid the galaxy of their scourge. How they laughed when they heard of your plans. Oh, how they laughed. <laughs> Uh, Star Castle's an, uh, arcade is an Atari 2600 version of the classic Simatronics arcade game. The objective is of the game is simple. To wow. <laughs> Destroy the Star Castles, collect as many points as you can, and survive as long as possible. Getting the hang of it, that's for sure. Uh, each Star Castle is fixed at the center of the screen. The castle is protected by three rotating energy rings. Each ring consists of 12 segments, which can be individually cleared when hit twice by your ship's missiles. Beware that completely eliminating the outer ring will cause the remaining energy rings to expand outwards. Ah, so you are right. Don't completely kill it, because if you do, it goes bloop and fills in. Uh, so you just want enough to be able to shoot through yeah. it. Uh, okay. Star castles are defended by three homing mines, which will kill your ship on contact. These mines will follow your ship around the screen until they run out of fuel, or you shoot them. Star castle can be destroyed by a single missile hit on the central gun through a gap in the rings. But beware, once such a gap has been made, the gun will be able to shoot deadly energy bolts at your ship. Right. Yeah, so as soon as you break through, it's like yeah. it's able to shoot you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can start there. Last paragraph. Mm -hmm. Oh! Oh, of course oh. it saves my name. <laughs> uh, so what did you want? J... Yeah, J-I-B. J-I-B. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you begin the game with three ships, and an extra ship will be awarded for each castle you destroy. The star oh, castles become so more aggressively defended as you progress throughout the game. Makes sense. Okay. Oh, I shot one of the little dots while it was still on its. Uh... Uh, yeah, and it sells us oh, very carefully. Yeah, it pauses the game when you switch to black and white. <laughs> uh, we discovered that. Oh. So once you punch a hole in it, it's like go time. Mm -hmm. Ah, ah! I'm just not doing very well at like running away. Mm -hmm. Ah! Can we start it? No. Are you playing two player? No. Thanks. So. No. <laughs> I want to play again. Oh, oh Jim. <laughs> the points are awarded as follows. 10 points per outer ring destroyed. Okay. Middle ring is 20 points per. Mm. Inner ring is 30 points per. And the star castle is 1,440 points. Oh, wow. Destroyed, plus an extra ship. Oh. And no points for destroying the mines. You just <laughs> don't die by them. Oh, okay. They're just an annoyance. Mm -hmm. Run away. Don't just sit there. Run away. What? Oh, I had a... Yeah, and you can switch the colors around from NTSC to Cal. Right. And yes, the various difficulties which we have already found. <laughs> yes. Diff yeah, the expert mode is not easy. Oh, how did you get him? How did you not get hit? He shoots Ooh. right at you. Star Castle 2 will score the high scores currently on the game cartridge itself. Oh. Ooh. The highest score ever is on the game cartridge? Yeah, the highest scores are actually on the cartridge itself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because there's default ones. Yeah. It doesn't save it on the cartridge. No. I don't think. I don't think there's any games for the 2600 that ever did that. I know um, Nintendo 
had uh, batteries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would, it would have to have a battery. Yeah. Or, or a very yeah. expensive um, non-volatile RAM. <laughs> it's got to be a battery. Or like a flash, a flash chip on it. Or yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, I, I think it's just defaults. Right? Mistaken. Ah! What happened there? Oh, I must have run into the yeah. little... Yeah, ran into the extra mine there. Yeah. So I guess if you run into the mine while well, it's still on the... Yeah, it's probably ah, still... Ah. Still valid. <laughs> ah. Do I get the score? Well, yeah, I made it to the second thing, so... Mm -hmm. Why doesn't it scroll automatically? <laughs> is so horror. Yeah, it's good music. Fun fact, Stella reports this running at 270 lines and frames per second at 58. This game? Hmm. Okay. Homebrew 2600 Tetris is called Chettery. Uh, called Chettery. Saves high scores to a chip on the cart. Oh, wow. Order sold out right now? I was going to order that, actually. <laughs> and my next round of uh, ordering. Damn it. Uh, maybe I'll wait till Portland Retro Gaming Expo to buy that one, and I'll buy the other ones before that. Because living in Canada, mm -hmm. shipping is A-OK. -okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's expensive. Getting anything of substance shipped to Canada from the U.S., that's why people will have mailboxes on the other side of the border. That is true. Yep. You can get really cheap ones. Mm -hmm. um, like paying per shipment. Yeah, yeah. Unless unless you get a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. where, in, where you just pay per month, then, it's, then it makes sense. But. Actually, in the, um, when I saw somebody doing playing this, the arcade version, mm -hmm. what they were doing is like going like this and then bouncing and then going like that okay but it, when you bounce it doesn't exactly bounce perfectly no because it looked like they were going boom 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 mm -hmm. back and forth but this one kind of throws you off a bit mm -hmm. i don't know if the that's... turret takes a while to track around as well oh so that's why once you build a hole it. you should jump to the other side and then shoot ah. through the hole before it moves around because ah. <laughs> if you're just waiting for the hole to show up and he's waiting to shoot off. Right. No. Oh, God. Of course, I have to have enough holes to actually... Oh, my God. Get out of here. Oh, now it's... I must have shot all the last bits. <laughs> At least he's not shooting me anymore. Did that count? Did I die? Yeah, it did count. And, and I died? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Both at the same time. It remembered both. Yep. <laughs> it's fair like that. Yeah. Can you get a high score by just continuously def just shooting rings and rings and rings and rings and rings? Technically, yes, but Slow. you're only getting like 10, 20, 30 <laughs> points each. So Prices the 1,400. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it takes a while to build that up. So, yeah, I mean... Do a marathon of just... Once you get rid of the mines, then yeah, I mean, you would just need to push the button like every three seconds. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> yeah. Yay. So my name in there. There you go. You're way above me. Sixth place. Somehow I don't think I'm going to get much higher than that. Jay Johnson says, I agree this is a great port. Oh yeah. It is a really good port. Looking at like footage of the um, arcade mm -hmm. game like it's got everything the arcade game does it's it's everything like um and and really their reproduction of the the rings and mm -hmm. making 
even the flashing kind of works in its favor mm -hmm. because it was it was you know drawn with uh, vectors right. and vectors kind of get that vibrating yeah. look to them. Yeah. Um, the the flashing of the Atari. Oh my god, that was terrible. It gave you no chance. <laughs> Just yeah, like paying hey. attention. Oh, I've got a hole here. Well, uh, um, and it's got the star field in the background. Mm -hmm. um, like, everything is, is amazing on this. The number of... Um, it's probably like 16 different positions of both ships. Yeah. Which is really good. And maybe even more. Yeah. It's... You know, it's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Checking out the... The different rotations of the ship, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I supposed to said I made sure that the star pattern is the same as the oh. arcade. Oh. Attention to detail. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might as well. If yeah. You can draw it, make everything exactly the same. There we go. Um, it's actually a pinup model. They put dots around, uh, kind of like a Farrah Fawcett poster. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can see the leg and the head and maybe an arm. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what like um, constellations are, right? Right. And uh, so that kind of works. That's kind of that's a cool little you know Ooh. Easter eggy kind of thing. Yeah. Um, great fun fact. Also, a pinup was the first reported computer graphic ever on a Sage screen. Uh, of course, it was. Mm -hmm. That's what drives uh, technology. Mm -hmm. He is boring. Yeah, there's a, a Reddit post of somebody who's like turned on a. A Mac classic, and the uh, the last image that was shown shown up was ah uh, yeah yeah <laughs> funny funny funny. So uh, for the credits, the game programming Chris Walton and Thomas Yanks. Game artwork and arcade model Nathan Strum. Sound effects Ivan Machado and Thomas Yanks. Title music Richard Kulor and Mijo. Cart label box and manual Jordi Cabo. Cart Hardware, Fred Quimby. Uh, cart Production, Albert Yarusso. And Star Castle would not have been possible without the help and support of the great folks of Atari Age. Uh, Star Castle Arcade may not be re reproduced or distributed without permission. Oh, and it was done through Kickstarter. Oh. Um, now, them using the name... Oh, it's got a big story in here. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll go through the story when I do the review of the game. This is just the Let's Play. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I'm wondering, like, how did it um, come about that they were able to use the name? Right. Did the name, like, follow a copyright or something? Usually not. Usually it gets passed down, passed down, bought up. Right. But um, there is... There is... There's there a chance. Been where different copyrights have just fallen out of favor because the company that owns it has gone defunct and the people who bought the rights to the other games that the publisher had yeah. forgot about that one. Yeah, it, it's, it's usually um, trademarks that mm -hmm. fall out of um, right. use from not being defended. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, patents, and patents expire. Mm -hmm. um, copyrights usually go on for a very long time, yes. like 90 years. Yeah. So usually... Unless they never bothered to copyright. That's... Yeah. I, mm, usually copyright is inherent. Well, so I guess that will just be a mystery <laughs> for another day, so stay <laughs> tuned. Yeah, a mystery <laughs> for another day. I feel like Mike Myers or Jason is lurking around the car when I hear the intro music. Dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is great, great music. It is wonderful. So let's just quickly look at what came in the packaging. Okay. A really beautiful cover with like a control panel like you're in a spaceship on the back. <laughs> you can look at it after. Um, now I'm never going to put this together, but it comes with a... Oh, a little mini cabinet. A little mini, mini cabinet nice. that you can piece together, but that, that will destroy it. That there's, is a very nice touch, which the other I side. guess you could just print another one to have yeah, and could, then you could keep the original. Yeah, you could photocopy it and mm -hmm. print it out in your printer. 
or scan it. Maybe photocopies. That's an old word. <laughs> oh, and there's the instructions on how to put the cabinet together. And a fold out. Usually these, these homebrews have a lot of bonus stuff. Right. Because the people making them, they're not made there to make yeah, money because yeah, they're not going sure. to make money. They're selling yeah, this maybe whole, hundreds. Yeah, this whole thing is a labor of love to start with. So. Yeah, so why not like put as much love into it and as much bonus stuff into it? So there we go. A beautiful poster Ooh. of the cover. Mm -hmm. So you can put pins through that and hang it on your wall. But me, I'm... I, keep everything in pristine condition not to resell but just so it it looks nice and mm -hmm. it's and it's in really nice condition you mm -hmm. oh, that's no you're not getting your name in. No. scores for that one <laughs> even the get ready mm -hmm. is done like they could have made it more solid mm -hmm. but they, they no they, they stuck true to the uh to the vision yeah stuck to the vector look of the game and it's, it's mm -hmm. just really good aesthetic of this game mm -hmm. run <laughs> Oh, no, I broke through without realizing it. Uh, no. Like, those missiles are so... Oh, my God, he's just firing. Mm -hmm. He's not even aiming at me. He's like, yeah, you're, you're around there. Yeah, basically, whenever he has, like, a shot, he takes it. Oh, uh, does he have to shoot through the... Yeah, he has to shoot through the hole as well. So. Okay. Through just his red one or through all of them? Through all of them. Okay. So he has just as much right. ability as you do. To shoot, to shoot through them. I will freely admit I am terrible at this game. Terrible. <laughs> okay, it's not an easy game by any stretch of the It is not. This must have been a quarter eater. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you got red when... I'm, bu I'm building up his shields. <laughs> but, oh yeah, back to Yar's Revenge. Um... Yeah, there's a ship. You start on the left. Mm -hmm. The enemy's on the right. Mm -hmm. um, there are these same shields, but they're more in a row mm -hmm. because curves are very hard to draw on a 2600. Yeah. Um, and when and he does get mad and mm -hmm. shoot out that thing. Mm -hmm. So he pretty much ripped off all the mechanics of it. Right, he just made a, an easier version to make of it. Yes, and um, since you've never seen it, I, and maybe I doubt anybody watching has never seen Yard's Revenge, <laughs> but uh, we'll we'll take a look at it. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, let's take a look at it uh, right. Actually, we'll go through the other s Star Castle mm -hmm. that was released in 2012, which is two years before this. Oh, okay. Oh, this is the actual cartridge. I forgot we weren't on the Harmony. I was like, where is it? This is the same game. There we go. Yeah, you get to see my blue screen. Blue screen of death. Okay, so... Star... Oh, did I miss it? Nope. Everybody gets to see all the games I have loaded. These are All these games are available... Uh, yeah, but these are going to be later, no, later they, episodes. So it's spoilers, <laughs> spoilers, right. people. Come Tons on, tons of spoilers. <laughs> that's right. Now all all these um, I downloaded off of um, like the Atari Age forums. Oh no, I had it in a zip file, but obviously mm. it's not like in the zip file. I don't think you can load zip files. <laughs> um, so let's look at Yard's Revenge first. Then. Okay. So these are all the original 2600 games. Mm -hmm. So this one's back from the 80s. There yeah. you go, 81. Yeah. So the arcade came out in 1980, and this came out a year later. Mm -hmm. So you can see, actually here, you can play that. Mm -hmm. This is not a homebrew. Be warned, people. <laughs> Be prepared. Oh. Or this is just... <laughs> Okay, so that's your ship. That's the enemy. There's the wall. Yeah. There's the the little yeah. dots coming after you, but it always comes after you. That's the safe zone in the middle from that dot. Not from that thing, though. No. 
and you can also eat away at the the shield. So if you go right up to it, oh. it's very slow though, yeah. and that gives you your missile. And then you press the button to let go of the missile to shoot the guy. But don't be too close to the missile because it can't hurt you. There you go. Oh, now you got the okay. idea. So you kind of have to clear out in front of him. So you're nibbling away at it. Yeah. And... There we go. There we go. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. that's Yard's Revenge. Yeah, that's that is a classic Atari game. <laughs> yes. Um, so I'm gonna load quickly load Star Castle, <laughs> okay. the other one. You can keep playing while yeah. I set it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yars Revenge. Somebody says Yars Revenge through a subwoofer is unreal. <laughs> this is got the wall. Wall. Yeah. I bet I'll have to do that one time when we have the next uh, video game event. <laughs> Hook it up to the speakers, yeah. big speakers upstairs, and just let it rumble. Died in the. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now I'm gonna have to turn. No, nope, not yet. I'll set it up a bit more. Find it on here. I thought I had it unzipped, but obviously I did not have it unzipped. Oops. Perfect timing. <laughs> there we go. I'm just going to switch back so they don't have to look at a blue screen for mm -hmm. a little bit. There you go. And I'm going to load um, load the Star Castle 2012 version. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the 8-bit version, or? E yeah, this is the. This is the 2012 version that was made before the Star Castle that we mm -hmm. just played. Right. Um, and I believe he only made, unless I'm mistaken, one copy of it <laughs> and sold it for $32,000. Wow. If I was reading correctly. And is this that is correct? the copy right here. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. No. He had a Kickstarter for it. I can't remember mm. the... the the story, but uh, some weird thing. Hmm. Okay, it's copied. Okay. Now I'll eject it, and we're ready to go again. Sorry for the delay, people. There we go. So, oh, is that where I put it? The root? Oh, possibly. <laughs> That's okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. A little bit different uh, screen there. Oh, game over. Ships left. Is there any noise? Oh. Whoa! Yeah. Oh my God! Ah, am I on the hard? I think you are. <laughs> Oh, and they just keep coming. I wonder if oh. you, and you don't get any points. I'm going to switch difficulty. Oh, what? <laughs> and see if that helps. Mm -hmm. Nope. Um, oh, my God. So it's just constantly... You constantly <laughs> have the three minds, so just deal with it. Yeah, it's just... Oh, my... How do you even... Maybe I'll switch to black and white. Maybe that's it? Oh. And you guys aren't seeing a thing. <laughs> Not much to see anyway. All right. Let's go back to the title screen, if I can. Or not. Okay. You'll see the title screen eventually. Okay. Immediately, these three dots are coming after you, and it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> so you can sit here and, like, shoot them forever. Yeah, but that doesn't really get you anything, so you, you're going to have to fly around, <laughs> shoot at the uh, the other side, and then, and then back. fly back to avoid the mines. They're constantly coming. Oh my god. I can see... Oh, what? What? Where am I? There I am. And then it's already got the, uh, yeah, the, and the I shot hope. prepped and ready to go. Yeah, because so I've got... I 
in here. <laughs> it's crazy. There's the title screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry about that. I couldn't see it. Okay, so I'm going to die. <laughs> Insta-death. Is this how it's supposed to play? I don't think so. I think... Like, that's insane. Like, I've switched all the difficulties. Oh, this is insane. Um... Oh, he, let's see. Who does a Kickstarter to make 20 grand and then he had to make his own clear cartridges and his own circuit boards and mail everything out and make his own boxes and finally he released it for free. <laughs> That's the story. <laughs> wow. um, surprise, surprise. After we showed we could program it better, he decided to put it on Kickstarter instead of selling one copy for $32,000. So that's what he, his original plan was. Uh, okay. Yeah, so that's a dumb plan. One so, copy? So he was going to Kickstarter it with one person, basically. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he finished it. Yeah. Demoed it and said, hey, it exists. Right. Who buy want, it. Who wants to buy it? Who wants to fund the, uh, the actual... Yeah. development now that I've made this on spec. That's like Wu-Tang Clan level kind of thing. Like they made one album, one copy of one album, right. and then sold it to that guy. Yes, but he now no longer has it. The U.S. government has it. <laughs> yes. And there's been a court ruling that they're allowed to sell it now. Yay! <laughs> That's a good thing. So they don't have to steal it. Because that was part of it. Yeah, if you can break in and steal it, then it can be released for free. Yeah, because part of it was by buying it, you agreed to never, to ne never give it away, never sell it, never play it, yeah, never copy it. Oh, you can do private, um, playings. I believe he it. like did a Twitch feed and like streamed yes. like half of one song. Yes. Or very awkwardly danced to it because <laughs> that's what he does. Well, he's in jail now, so yeah, his time in the spotlight is over. Ooh. This game is insane. Like, it is. Like, is this, it's not even playable. Like, unless we're missing something. Like, these dots. Yeah, the ah! dots are too fast. The, uh, the gun is already prepped as turrets. You can barely see which angle it's shooting yeah, the, shoot you the, from. Yeah, the bullet's ready to yeah. go. So you can't, like, which direction is he facing? I mean, the circles are nice. They're very nicely mm -hmm. animated. Those are really good. Yeah, I mean... This is a game that is existing right now. <laughs> That's what I can tell you who wrote it. Yeah, but look, look the at this. The playability of it is zero. Like you're dead. You're if you don't shoot those things, you're dead. Dead. Ah! <laughs> don't look away. So my yeah. recommendation is you go for the newer one. <laughs> yeah, it's it, yeah. The, the old one is is bad news. It's just unplayable. Okay. <laughs> I, well, I don't I don't want to play this game because yeah. yeah, I can't yeah I think we've shown it and that's that's enough <laughs> Yars Revenge kicks this is ass so mm -hmm. yeah so I'm glad that there was a new I'm glad this one came out so that mm -hmm. people can actually mm -hmm. experience yes because this is this is a, a treat to play it's showing yeah. that you what, what you can actually do with Antari yeah it's hard as hell Mm -hmm. Not impossible like this, but it it's mm -hmm. challenging, let's say. Really challenging. Mm -hmm. um, but um, a definite buy if you like these style of um, these games. And if you especially if you like Star Castle Arcade, because it looks like a mm -hmm. perfect conversion from what I've seen mm -hmm. online. Um, let's just get that uh, monstrosity off the screen. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know if they... I think they do still sell the boxed version mm -hmm. of this. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if they sell the cabinet stuff. I usually try and buy... Oh, they must, because I didn't buy this in 2014. Mm -hmm. I bought this in, like, a couple years ago. So they probably mm -hmm. still have the exact same copy. Because on Atari Age, sometimes they put out, like, the deluxe version. Oh, okay. And they order X number of boxes, like 200 boxes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then when they run out of boxes... That's it. Yeah. That's it for the boxes. And then they sell the cartridge version. So mm -hmm. it's always a good idea to buy it as soon as possible. Yeah, if you want the full thing, you better just bite the bullet and go Jump ahead and do it. Jump on it. Yeah. And then there's ones that are like limited to 50 copies. And you got to mm -hmm. go right away. Because I bought a, like a, 
Fairchild Channel F multi-cart, and mm -hmm. he made like a limited number of them, and I mm -hmm. barely, I think I got the last number. Mm -hmm. I barely squeaked in. Mm -hmm. Homebrew is a very interesting scene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not like PlayStation 4 games where it's unlimited, mm -hmm. unless you're buying limited run games, and then it's a different kind mm -hmm. of thing. The boxes come from Germany. Oh, that's Ooh. interesting. Do all the Atari age boxes come from Germany? Possibly. Possibly. They all look. They all look like this. So I mean, whoever can make them, the yeah, best. Whoever can matter. make it, and then whoever can actually, I guess, put the actual cartridge together properly as well. Yeah, I know. Um, well, the cartridges are made in the U.S. by, oh, okay. by Atari Age. These are made oh, in house okay, by okay. Atari Age. Mm -hmm. At least assembled. I'm not sure about the chips mm -hmm. inside. So the boxes come from Germany. I think I read that before. They come from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and most of these, actually, these cartridges are refurbished from oh, other games. Because okay. he, he's always asking for donation cartridges. Mm -hmm. and you actually get money off games. Oh, that's nice. Not much, because mm -hmm. you can go out and buy like a thousand combats. Right. <laughs> and donate combats, which is, that's what people are going to do. Because it's like the pack-in game. Well, I mean, you could go to the landfill and dig up some, <laughs> some ETs as well while you're True. at it. True. Yeah. You know, an ET <laughs> is a good donator one as well. <laughs> uh, uh, does your Fairchild have Pac-Man? On the multi-card, I think it does. Mm -hmm. I don't have the Pac-Man. That's the one big expensive Fairchild I'm missing. And, mm. and some of the upper numbers as well. I do have a lot of Fairchild games. Um, but the upper numbers are now in like, they started like $200 wow. for a game that I may not ever play because <laughs> Fairchild games are like literally blocks on the screen, mm -hmm. barely not blocks. There's blocks with little jut outs, right. little cutouts and jut outs. It's, it's not good, but the <laughs> Pac-Man game's really good. Um, mm -hmm. but it was really limited and sold out before I got into Fairchild. Mm. It's I don't know if you know anything about the Channel F Fairchild. No. No. It was the first game console with the game on the cartridge. Oh, okay, okay. So, like the Atari, mm -hmm. you plug in a game, there's no game in the console, and it's mm -hmm. all contained on the, on the cartridge. Mm -hmm. There were consoles before that that had cartridges, mm -hmm. but all they did was connect wires <laughs> inside to tell the system which game it wanted to play so if so, you were a kid you could just like cross those wires yourselves and play all the games yep you could if you knew the combination of it was just like an easy way to change games rather than yeah, dip yeah. switches mm -hmm. which kind of makes sense it, it does but yeah. you're still kind of limited to the games that are on the machine to start with you are and really they were all variations of pong <laughs> <laughs> before channel f it was like pong mm -hmm. hockey <laughs> tennis <laughs> racquetball <laughs> it always involved a paddle a ball and a wall or a non-wall or like an opening in a wall right one or two player yeah just i i i suppose to said just the fact that you can play a homebrew pac-man on the on a machine released in 1976 when pac-man came out <laughs> in 1980 yeah yeah that is unique that's for sure eight colors you can use like three and it has 64 <laughs> bytes of ram nice so half the amount of ram that the atari had which you know it's a simpler system so you don't need as much ram well it's yeah, 64 bytes that's better than 64 bits <laughs> yeah 64 bits is is a rough go <laughs> you just have a bunch of on and offs it's like is this happening are you dead are you alive it's like how many Push lives the does not die yeah, Continue like, to push the button to not die. <laughs> yes. Keep pushing the button. Oh, you didn't push the button. You died. <laughs> the breathing pretty, simulator. Pretty much. Take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Three out of eight colors. Hello. Come in. Oh, cats. Oh, we're still we're still broadcasting. It's Tanya. Hello. And and Atari. He was waiting very patiently. Oh yeah, he wasn't scratching. No, he was just lying. He's listening to everything that's going on in the room. Yeah, we're just wrapping up. Oh, no, I was just curious. Yeah, the great thing, <sighs> he was just mentioning colors. Mm -hmm. The great thing about 
the Atari 2600 is that it had a lot of colors. Mm -hmm. It had um, 256 colors. Mm -hmm. You can pick from any of them. Yeah. Because it drew line per line and it can't remember anything <laughs> before that line. Right, right. And so... it can't anticipate the line be after it. So it's like, at the moment, mm -hmm. what color do you want right now? What color <laughs> do you want right now? Yeah. It's, it's, that's what made the Atari really stand out for a long time. Like, not till, like, later on, even in PCs. Mm -hmm. Like, when did it go from, like, um, 16 color, like, EGA oh. graphics? You know, yeah, that yeah. kind of off purple mm -hmm. and green. And there's, like, maybe eight colors or something. Mm -hmm. And not to, like, I don't know, VGA was the first? Yeah. 256. And that's, like, quite a bit in. That's way mm -hmm. past 1977. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's, like... That's late 80s late 80s early 90s early 90s yeah yeah so way ahead of its time so mm. that's why a lot of um you know graphics on covers of 2600 games had like mm. the rainbow right that's why it kind of represented atari for a while yeah so, yeah those colors mm -hmm. so uh that was uh yeah star castle is great let's mm -hmm. just uh and um the first game it's a good start yeah it's it's a good start it's a good it's a good working concept. There's no like yeah. game crashing bugs. No, yeah. I didn't find any problems with it. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think it needs a little bit more complexity. Like yeah, some, a little like. I a mean, to be fair, more. we weren't using the joysticks like they wanted us to. So true. Um, so it's it's fairly complete for a simple game, and I don't know if mm -hmm. he's going to continue developing yeah. it because it was a made for a specific purpose mm -hmm. of like a challenge. Um, but for that for a month long or week long challenge it's it's really good it's a very mm -hmm. complete game um the second game the the dk great great game yeah yeah it was spot on to what you're expecting from a brand new game called dk <laughs> so <laughs> yes and um other than that ladder little mm -hmm. weirdness where you're off to the side which mm -hmm. didn't actually impact anything yeah no that you're was... just off to the side mm -hmm. They think somebody would call that a feature. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm just climbing mm -hmm. with one hand, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it was perfect. I didn't find any bugs. Mm -hmm. There's a little, um, there was a little screen flip when you first turn on the system mm -hmm. um, that it goes blip and cuts out the frame meister. So you might want to look into that if um, if there's any any bugs that you want to fix. Um, other than that, I, it was it was spot on it has all four levels the graphics were awesome the sound was awesome like everything so yeah that mm. that can be shot out into a cartridge yeah for and, sure uh, sold if possible <laughs> yeah that <laughs> we'll <that> see <laughs> if it is mm -hmm. um because the only thing they'd have to contend with is the the um opening screen right. with the name on it yes and beyond that it depends on how the graphics go over mm -hmm. and you know design but i think you can get away mm -hmm. a little bit um with gameplay and design um somewhat because there's a lot of games out there that copy a lot of games like even recently with um uh battleground player unknown and mm -hmm. then other games copying that yeah. closing in design of gameplay area. Yeah. Um, so the only thing that really got from them them trying to do the takedowns of the other versions was yeah. making the other versions more popular than themselves. So. <laughs> yes, <laughs> identifying and pointing out, hey, you over there, stop yes, doing what we're doing. You're making a better version of our thing. <laughs> yeah. Stop doing that. <laughs> and, and even that... Re reducing gameplay area is in other old games mm -hmm. like you know years and years decades before that yeah um, so it's it's hard to copyright a, a game yeah mechanic yeah it's more like the characters or names and whatnot so. yeah that's a lot that's why when you see um pirated stuff they always change the name mm -hmm. but they never changed much of the content inside the game mm -hmm. I'm like I'm talking back in like the 80s and 90s when they made pirated versions. Well, overseas. that was uh, the good story of that was Tim Schafer applying to LucasArts, mm. and he was interviewing with one of the guys. And he's like, "Oh, hey, you made so and so a game. I really love that." Yeah. And the guy replied, "No, the the name was the other one. 
The one you're referring to is the pirated version. Oh, yes. I did see that. That was very funny. Oh, where was that on? Some YouTube video um, a couple months back. Yeah. I think that was part of the documentary that they did for for their Kickstarter game, the, the Double Fun Adventure. Oh. So he was talking about his old LucasArts days. Yes. Yes, that's it. So, yeah. I, and, and it applies to, mm -hmm. like, handbags and copyright on there they always change the name just a little bit put the mm -hmm. dot somewhere else drop yeah. a letter mm -hmm. but the bag looks the same mm -hmm. but i know fashion you can't you can't copyright but you can trademark a name right um so i haven't i'm not really up on video game um you'd have to phone up howard scott warshaw he is like a mm -hmm. video game expert uh witness that's mm -hmm. what he does the, the guy who makes made yars revenge right. he transitioned into that <laughs> um so he would be the guy to ask but i'm mm -hmm. not sure how far removed from the original game mm -hmm. you have to be right. um to make it that you can release it because i know they're they release like pac-man 4k but mm -hmm. that is not um that company <laughs> mm -hmm. um and they're pretty good i think i think it's namco yeah namco is so far removed from making games at yeah. this point as well they're just like happy anybody rec remembers their name mm -hmm. i think um and ladybug i think they got the actual okay for that one mm. um and draconian there that's actually a good example because it's based off of bosconian which is an arcade game and it plays exactly the same <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. so i think you're pretty safe um as long as you get rid of any names any references right so far anybody can correct us um <laughs> thanks for the suggestion why what i picked such why did i pick a, such a hard title <laughs> for my first sesh, second game mm -hmm. yeah the intellivision dk homebrew uses the speech samples and music from the arcade rom mm. okay Oh, the Intellivision DK. I don't think I've played that yet. Oh, interesting. I'll have to try that out because I, last year I got the Hive cartridge that is um, has the SD card in it, so oh, I can okay, okay. so I can play that. And I will get into Intellivision and Coleco Homebrew. Mm -hmm. I don't have a Coleco um, SD card uh, um, that I can load games onto yet, but okay. I do have Intellivision, so I might do that one next. Right. And do you have the modded? machines for those yet or? no i haven't upgraded those but you know it's hopefully sh it's just rf mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so i may actually upgrade those mm -hmm. i have a bunch of intellivisions so i can definitely okay. sacrifice one of those mm -hmm. colecos i think i have two so i can sacrifice one of those if not i just mm -hmm. go and buy one they're cheap as dirt right um so i'm i probably would want to upgrade that before i start streaming that because mm -hmm. you always want the best quality Mm -hmm. This is an RGB. This is the mm -hmm. best you can get out of an Atari 2600. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen some people do HDMI mods, but I think it's just a converter inside the mm -hmm. 2600 and not an actual processing chip, but I'll have to look into that. Mm -hmm. Some sprites are actually registered trademarks. Oh, Space Invaders characters. That would make sense for, for Space Invaders, at least. So um, recognizable. Other things that have moved on from the sprites, perhaps? Yeah, they'd have didn't. to tra trademark every iteration of it. Yeah, so I think they probably only have the trademark for the latest, or... There you go. Space Invaders little button. <laughs> so, I don't see a TM on this. <laughs> Is it on the back? Was it on no, the... No, these are cheap, cheap, cheap yeah. buttons I uh, ran across here. <laughs> My badge? I don't know. I bought this off eBay, I think. This is for mm. the upcoming gaming thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because we're celebrating the 40 years of the arcade. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we've rambled on long enough. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. Um, some good games today. And um, we're usually broadcast on Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesday's a little bit loose. If Wednesday's busy, we might do Tuesday or Monday. Um, but usually Fridays are pretty set. Probably be back at 2 p.m. next Friday with um, Darcy because he's here every second week. And we have a fill-in guest this week. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. maybe back next another time. Yeah. Awesome. Because you had this Friday off, right? Yes. Okay, so that made mm -hmm. it a little bit easier. Yes. 
<laughs> okay. So thanks for tuning in to Zero Page Homebrew. And uh, make sure you um, visit the Facebook and subscribe to everything and all that kind of stuff. You know mm -hmm. the drill that everybody else, <laughs> everybody says on mm -hmm. every YouTube video and Twitch mm -hmm. stream and everything like that. Um, we've got it all. Just search for Zero Page Homebrew. So uh, we'll see you uh, next time. Bye-bye.